Traders. Welcome back. Episode 43. Connor, thanks for joining us again. Thank you, Scotty. How are you? I'm not too bad. And everyone, uh, we've got a jam-packed episode as well. You know, five or six potential trades. Risk disclaimer straight away. Okay, so Connor and I, we're discussing trade setups. We're discussing Forex, sometimes Bitcoin, sometimes other stuff. You know, we're not giving out financial advice. We're not qualified to do that. So please, if you're thinking about investing money somewhere or trading, uh, get educated. I'd suggest Google searching or YouTube searching Walter Peters, and he'll get you to the basics. And then probably buy Backtester, which is in the link um, in the description section as well. There's a Christmas special on as well, guys. You actually save $100. So um, no one's actually taken up on that offer. So please go to the link. Save $100. That's a lot. You know, it's still $200, but um, it's, it's only a one-off payment. You can get the data, the other data subscription as well, so you get more pairs. But honestly, the backtesting is going to really, really help your progress as well and save you from losing money, as Connor would probably attest, along with me as well. Yes, yes, I attest to that. It's like, you know, you know, buying $200 seatbelts for your car. Like, you know, it's just going to, it's good. It's safe. You know, it keeps you, you know, from hurting yourself financially. So anyway, enough of that, guys. Um, we've got the Aussie dollar now. And this is, you know, typical Dullsville. Um, you know, I mean, what are your thoughts, Connor? Is that that's looking more bullish than bearish, really? Yeah, as, as a, um, as a sell. As you're in the cell, <laughs> yep, I, am. I yeah, yeah. I'm, look, it, good on you, <laughs> but I can see it just it looks like it's turning to me. Um, but it you does. know, like, you got to die on your shield, Scotty. I do, I do. And look, I mean, I got in this; it was ambitious, and I knew going into it that the Aussie dollar could consolidate pretty strongly because it's not like a pair that's prone to be very volatile. It doesn't move a whole lot, and it's, it's recently had some good data out. Um, Connor and I, we, we don't really follow the fundamentals too much, but, you know, it's it's looking quite strong. So it's going to need some dramatically bad news to really cause this to collapse. So I'll leave it as that. That's the drawdown that's currently at. It's just $37, so not going to, you know, cause too much pain. But we will go to the Aussie yen next four-hour time frame, everyone. And it's it's looking pretty good. And I took a very small position out on this because I'm already in the Aussie dollar trade and probably too conservative. So just looking at that chart there, Connor, um, it's you alerted me to this, I think, as well. Or was it the Aussie CAD you alerted no, me I, to? No, I, I uh, yeah, alerted you to the Aussie CAD. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, look. This one's a little bit more bullish than the Aussie CAD is. It is. And I think I like the Aussie CAD. Um, it was a little choppy, but this is not perfect by any means, guys, because if you see, I'll go to the line graph. We, we do have some resistance, really, um, that's going to have to contend with. In, you know, even in the 87s, it's in the 87s now, so it's uh, it's got some work to do. So I knew this going into it, so whenever you put a trade on, it's good to be aware of what's happened in the past. So this one is, you know, we'll see. It could get very interesting. But um, that's the Aussie yen. So, Connor, we'll go to your screenshot here of the Euro Swissy. Take it away. Okay, so Euro Swissy, as you anyone who's been following this has been going on for a while now. I've been this for about five weeks, and it's just starting. As you can see, it's it's starting to uh, go through the push through the green box. And if you look to your left, you can see a big bearish, a uh, really big bearish. Uh, big shadow mm, yeah. uh, and it looks like it may be getting over the top of that i'm hoping it gets to you know it it closes above that and then that i think would be good signs that it's going further up uh, as you can see at the moment i'll put that box around it because it just looks like that's the sort of support and resistance that it's hitting and yeah i'm hoping it doesn't go back down we'll see like i said mm. you just gotta got a grid and bear it with these sorts of things where was the stop loss? Is that the green dash line? Yeah, there? the stop loss is the green dash line, if anyone can see it, at 1.1507. Yep. Yeah, we've got it. Nice. Yep. I highlighted yeah. and I zoomed in there. So that's where that is, guys, down there. So when would the stop loss be moved? Because some people might be like, oh, Connor, you know, why isn't it moved right at the edge of the box, potentially? When would that happen? So that would happen when it 
I would do when it gets to the next zone, which is yep. a fair bit up. So because once it goes through here, it uh, so I do a zone exit for this one, Scotty. Yep. Yep. This is just how I've back tested it and how I tried it. So the next zone isn't it's a fair way up. So I just wait till it, it goes like to the next zone. Yeah. And yep. uh move it. So I, it's gonna have a lot of room to breathe for a fair while for me. Yeah, I agree, because you don't currently it's just, you know, peeking out of the out of the consolidation there. So you definitely wanna let it, you know, do its thing because it could turn a little bit and then you just wanna let it play out i like the trend line you've got in there as well so yeah definitely bullish on uh that one so that is euro swissy guys and i will go to we've got the usd singapore dollar trade as well which is on and i'll zoom out here so is this this is a winning trade so far you're in a little bit of profit no uh, i actually no it's now it's just hitting break even at the uh, moment it yeah i see it yep you can see that, but I'm not overly concerned with that move up, as as you probably wouldn't be. Like it's not nothing. Yeah. Uh, it's, no conviction to it at the moment. That's, so that's right. this this is a totally different system that I use with the box with the box trade. So what's happened is, uh, Scott, if you could just point to that bearish uh, shadow, uh, that bearish um, candle that I showed you before, yeah, that yep, yep. to me had made a like lower low. Yeah. Yep. So, because after the after the uh, initial breakout, there was some consolidation, and then it started to go down further. Yeah, it did. It's pretty sweet how it collapsed. Then, so. Yeah. Yeah. So then I thought, like, just with uh, my exiting strategy, once that happens, I move it to the top of the dip, and so I moved it to the top of the dip, and now I'm just waiting. Hopefully, it goes down further after this. And then so I can... the original stop loss was above the green box there and now that's been moved yeah. to 1.3491 or so yeah yes yes correct yep so i've moved it quite a bit so i was risking two i was risking two percent now i'm probably risking roughly one percent i haven't checked the actual yeah i get that uh, yeah so that that's yeah. what's yeah that makes sense it does look about half just looking at it just because you've got one, two, three, four, four and a half grids, and it was originally yeah, yeah about four and a half. So, um, so guys, what's happened there is there's less risk at play, and the trade seems to be going pretty well. So you can do that if the trade moves in your favour, just to reduce your risk a little bit, but only once it's moved sufficiently enough. Because you don't want to move it too quickly, like you naturally would like to do, because that can end up closing the trade out, you know, way too early in most cases. So, yeah, if you don't have any, if you don't have any, uh, you know, rules to your exit strategy, if you don't have any principles, you invite chaos into your life. You do, and it's very easy to do that in forex world because it's pretty. Uh, it goes on. I mean, you know, you can trade it Monday to Friday, twenty four hours. So it's not as crazy as Bitcoin, where you can do it over the weekend, but you can end up, you know, doing a bit of damage to yourself. Really, if there's no rules. Like it's can can turn pretty pretty ugly. Now just to finish off, we've got the New Zealand US dollar here, guys, on the four hour chart. So is this something you're looking at trading potentially, Connor? What would you be looking for? Yeah, so no, this one I am in. I'm in it on the daily. Yep. So it broke through a box on the daily. Oh, if you go to the the four hour, that's a good way of looking at it too, because it's just sort of going sideways now. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. So oh, I've got I see. a. Uh, it was yeah. that little bullish. Well, it was a nice bullish little candle there that engulfed. Um, it was yesterday. Is that was that the buy signal there? So, no, yeah, no, it was, a, it was a few days ago. There was a box. I'm not sure if you uh, if you have it. I sent you a, a screenshot of it with the yep. box, but yep. uh, not yet. None. Nevertheless, it's just going sideways at the moment. I'm in it. I've got my stop loss under zero point six eight one five. Like yep. I've got it under that sort of area, so it's pretty safe. Um, it's just going sideways. I'll just see what happens there. And they're my trades, and then I'm not getting in anything uh, yeah. anything else. These yeah. ones play out. And um, so I've so. I've, what I've got here, guys, is as well, if you're looking to follow us on Twitter, we do screenshots of trades. We put all the videos up that we've, we've put up in the past. So if you're looking for one main source, 
you know, to get all the videos if you want to go back in time and, and see. Because I think we started this in March this year as well, guys. It's Trade Talk Pippin. We've actually recently brought, uh, uh, went over 3,500 followers, guys. So if you want to get in touch with us, Twitter's easy. You can leave a comment on YouTube as well. Um, you know, things will probably die down a little bit. Uh, Connor and I were discussing leading into the Christmas period. So, you know, we'll still do the trade talk, but it might be, if it is a little bit slower, that's just the nature of, of things really, unfortunately. Um, what I might do, Connor, is just see the price of Bitcoin just to finish up the video. Because yeah. we were discussing, was it last week, the uh, how many people, it's just, everyone's talking about it. It's sort of... Yeah, everyone's talking about a lot of the cryptocurrencies now. Like, I just get people... Like my mates telling me about these different cryptocurrencies and how good they are, um, as if they know. I've got a, like I said, I've got a few, few mates who are just a few cowboys who are just trading it and they're doing quite well. I was looking uh, up a bit. It was a ninety-eight percent bull market, so that's two percent shorting it. It's pretty interesting. But, um, that's a yeah. good point. Then you've got the Ripple and uh, a few of the other ones, um, but. Like I said, it just I don't know. I just look at the technicals and I can't really see anything. On the okay, so this is pretty interesting. On the 18th, it was 19,666, and then mm -hmm. yesterday the low was 14,497. So I'm no yeah. I mean, that's pretty volatile, guys. So, and that was on the weekend when it got to nearly 20,000. It seems the weekend brings out you know, some aggressive buyers. Um, but I mean, you know, you're well, looking at nearly, what, like a 25%. Yep. Yeah. In a, few, in a few days. Yeah. But I mean, guys, yeah. you know, if you are trading it, Connor and I don't have positions in it. So we, I can't really, you know, say a lot, but I mean, I know someone actually trades uh, Bitcoin and cryptos full time and he quit an engineering job. So if you have that personality, you can tolerate, um, you know, if you got in near the high, that's a little painful, you know, like if you had a big position, you know, but you got to have faith, you know, you listen to these guys and they talk about it and I'm sure it will get to something ridiculous, especially with Wall Street involved now, they're going to pump it um, and then, then they'll probably blow it up like they like to do. So, you know, we'll see. It's just entertaining to talk about, isn't it really? <laughs> This to finish. Yeah. This to finish the episode. But um, again, guys, if you've got any questions, please feel free. Trade Talk Pippin is the handle for Twitter. Um, leave a comment on YouTube, or if you want to come on, if you want to come on and talk about Bitcoin, or you want to talk about trading, or you know anything trading relating, um, feel free to get in touch. Um, I tried Ben as well again, Connor. I he, he couldn't come on unfortunately. So, but um, we might be getting him back on guys if you remember ben when he came on so he's still trading as well which is good um, and he likes the uh the lower time frame so he does. Good to... that's right because obviously connor and i you know for most people they're going to be like this is boring so he brings an interesting flavor to the mix so mm -hmm. but um i think that's time guys thanks again connor do you want to add anything to finish off that's it, it yeah you ended it on a... on a bit of a high note you know bitcoin and yeah Anyway, guys, thank you again for watching and for the support. Um, safe trading and uh, Merry Christmas as well, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.